So how many plugins you need to get your bass and kick to sit tight and sound fat? The answer is not as many as they try to sell to you. Tell them to bring me my money. Yeah! Some of them are really cool, but the truth is that you only need a couple of simple tweaks to turn a simple sine wave Boring. into a fat boy that pisses off your neighbors. But let's quickly talk kicks. The longer they are, the harder it gets to blend them together with bass. Now put your headphones on or turn up your monitors and listen to those two examples. Heard how the second one feels wobbly whenever kick and bass are playing together? That's because the kick has longer tail, which interrupts the bass. For the genre I currently make, which is drum and bass, I like to use for really short kicks and even shorten them a little bit with simpler or with a volume shaping tool like Shaperbox, for example. Now, once I get back to listening to my sub only, notice that even without sidechain enabled, the first example, which is a shoulder kick, sounds way better than the second one. Speaking of sidechain, sure, it helps. So just simply put a compressor on your bass, select kick as sidechain source and call it a day. If you want to spend a couple of hours guessing what's wrong with your mix and why your bass sound like shit. I get it, it's a fast and easy tool, but sidechain specific or volume shaping tools can be even faster in the long run. From now on, I'm gonna use the Max for Life device called Chain Shaper. If you would like it, the link is down in the description, but feel free to follow along with the ones you have, like LFO2, Kickstart 2, Shaperbox, or Gatekeeper. The starting point we already have sounds and looks fine for me, but let me just quickly adjust it a little bit to have less overlapping in this area. Now moving on to bass. This one sounds fine, right? Now if you expect me to have some crazy processing and wavetables, then ta-da! Even my Degus can replicate that. I told them you guys know the basics of sound design, so don't disappoint me, please. Right? But with the simple sound design lies the biggest tip I learned when it comes to making juicy basses. So let's start from scratch. So a simple sine wave sounds nothing like what you heard before. So before reaching out for saturation, distortion or any Bassmaster 3000 VST plugin, let's work on harmonics first. So I really like how Current by Minimal Audio handles adding harmonics, but I currently just started using Current... Wait, what the fuck? I just started using their subscription bundle and it seems like it's missing a key feature that is really, really needed for this tip. Let me get back to our good old friend Seabrim. So first thing you need to do is to go to Wavetable Editor and start adding harmonics. Yet again, full credit goes to Mr. Bill for his top-notch explanation. To have your bass beefy and present, you need to aim to add this many harmonics for your sine wave to start to look a little bit flat here, obviously without turning it into square. Now you can fine-tune your settings by changing the face of those harmonics, the individual ones in this panel, and I think that will look pretty damn good. Let me check how it sounds. All right, obviously we need to add a little bit of distortion. Hope you're still with me, cause since I've mentioned face, it's time for the most important tip. Clicking the like button and turning it into wavetable in Serum. Nah, it doesn't do shit as wavetable, but it helps me to know you enjoy this one. So all sounds are waveforms and their cycle is called phase. You should already know that when those two are cancelling each other out, you get this. And obviously you don't want that for your kick and bass. So we already have a half work done with sidechain, but as you can see, once the chain shaper is releasing the curve, you can see that the face is actually not aligning properly in some hits. It looks even clearer once I switch to the main oscilloscope, which is reading both my kick and bass. As you can see, the waveform here is constantly changing in this area. 
and we don't want that. So the biggest enemy of solid bass is phase randomization. So get back to your synth and turn it all the way down. That is really easy because we are still playing only the root note. But what happens if your bass line jumps around like mine one here? It will be hard to adjust every single note and its face. Not really. Watch out, here comes the bump. So with this face rotation knob, you obviously can make a automation line here and then just automate it to possibly every single note you have here. But the faster solution for that is to grab a velocity source and map it to face knob. So as you can see, once I change the velocity, the face rotation of my bass sound changes. By the way, my bass is obviously blue here on this oscilloscope. And I guess that will do for now. It's perfectly aligned. Let me just try working with the C note here. Yeah, I think that will do for this example. So here we are with the face aligned perfectly bass. As you can see here, we have a lot of velocity changes here for single notes. There are no big fluctuations in this area. But once I play you the sub with phase randomization option enabled, but yeah, it's never gonna be perfect unless you're gonna use one root note just like Psytrance guys do. Now, I know this whole thing is a little bit geeky, but if you thought I'm gonna end it here, then...